Who could have imagined in 1962 as this college district was formed and the first classes were offered in rented storefronts, yet just some 50 years later we would be standing on a second comprehensive campus and opening our third state-funded building in just the last six years. We should be thankful of the vision of that original Board of Trustees establishing the college as well as the vision of the Board of 1990 to move forward with this campus. How many years did you teach here, Grandma? I was one of the first instructors at the college. Our college started with an idea to get a community college in this very rural part of Riverside County. Our little blue collar community was excited to have an educational uh, facility and have a college of its own. Well, Milo Johnson was the founder and first president of Mount San Jacinto College. I would say he was an ultimate gentleman, uh, just one of those gentleman educators uh, that knew how to handle faculty. Uh, students and, and to plan for the future. This was Milo's dream and he pulled this institution together and he was there for the students. He hired the faculty, he knew what he was looking for in the faculty, he knew what his goals were. And I think that is the legacy of Mount San Jacinto is the quality of teaching. Where the college was going to lo be located, what parcel of land it would rest on was a debate. I do remember when Carl Quant, the farmer, gave the college the land. I do remember how excited people were and probably how grateful they were then. I don't think they had any idea how difficult it was to pass a bond in the small community of Hemet and San Jacinto, Banning and Beaumont. Uh, people didn't have a lot of money, so adding taxes scared them. In 1968, the college finally passed a bond for this campus and the college still stands on that same site today. Once the first couple buildings were there, administration building, a humanities building, um, we just took off. And we never looked back. When I went to Mount San Jacinto, I really felt like I was at home. It was a college where the instructors were very involved with the students in a way that made you feel like you were a part of their class and not a number. So in that day and age, Mount San Jacinto for me met every need that I had. It was a place that I felt comfortable. It made it easier for me to learn. The faculty stores were always open. Students that were attending Mount San Jacinto needed. The faculty were our teachers, our mentors, and our friends. One of the first career technical programs was poultry management. And then we had automotive technology. Automotive repair came right after that. Those were kind of very important programs for the community. I mean, I could point to many, many students who went into a program or took a class and they it changed their lives. Milo Johnson had us doing a lot of things that hadn't been done in the past and we were part of that new thing. He, he wanted our faculty to engage in innovative learning through technology. I think Mount San Jacinto has always been ahead of the curve and we've always had creative and innovative teaching. And then along came folks like uh, Blair Ceniceros who really got involved in that technology and using that as adjuncts uh, to assist the students in developing what they're doing. Ivan Couch uh, was an instructor that came with the idea that we need to have computers. Now this was at a time when there really were no computers. The school spirit and the activities that we had were, were phenomenal. We were very, very active. The SGA I was on was very, very active and we put on a number of events. Homecoming when I was there was very well attended. We had bonfires um, out in the back. Of course there were no houses around the college so you could have the biggest bonfire you want. Some of my fondest memories were getting ready for the barbecue. That was a great tradition. 
Homecoming games were really exciting. Uh, we had we had people coming back from all over. So you had community participation in those uh, bonfires and all the extra activities. And everybody came and, and they got together. It was it was it was a real nice time. In 77, when they had a slogan, it became Back to Jack. It was a thrilling time at the college because it was a lot of uh, activity in the sports department. We were champions of everything. Athletics was a major event in the community, and every Saturday night we played our home games at the Hemet High School Old Field, and um, we packed the stadium. It was great to, to show up for a, a 7 o'clock ball game. I get there at 4.30, 5 o'clock. And by six, people were lining up outside the gym. There'd be two, three, four hundred people, you know, by the time they opened the, the gate uh, at, at 6.15. We had basketball teams that would score over a hundred points every single game. Now, I thought that was normal because we did it always. McDonald's, uh, they'd offer, offer a hamburger, fries, and a Coke to every player if they scored over a hundred points. So that became the, the marker and we scored over 100 points almost every game. But again, think about this. You come to a community college that doesn't have a lot of resources. You know, you don't have a lot of trainers and, and athletic rooms and, and all kinds of assistant coaches, and you build this program and you become the winningest basketball coach in, in California history. Wow, that says a lot about John, also says a lot about Mount San Jacinto College. In the 60s and 70s and 80s, we were really one of the primary entertainment venues in the San Jacinto Valley. So when they came and put on the plays, the symphonies, the big band, the community was thirsty for something like that. We packed the theater at San Jacinto. One of the first musicals that we ever attempted uh, at Mount San Jacinto College in uh, 1975 was my Fair Lady, and there were skeptics. A, a musical, a Broadway musical at Mount San Jacinto. But it was so ex successful, the theater filled every night. Then after that, we were known for our musicals. And, uh, you know, over the next, uh, well, right up to today, we're doing musicals on both campuses. But we, we launched that, and we're, that's one of our proudest moments. And certainly, everybody that goes to the theater productions at the college always knows that they're going to see real quality work. In 1975, Paris, Elsinore, and Temecula voted to join the Mount San Jacinto College District. Milo Johnson was very, very smart. He, he knew demographics, and he was watching this area grow. And uh, he decided that we need to extend out to the Menifee campus. When we opened the Menifee campus, the San Jacinto campus embraced that opening because the faculty, staff, administration, many of them moved over here to make sure that this campus got a good start, was successful, could offer what the students needed here. We were excited about the opening of the Menifee campus. And the, the school has done a lot to go after funding that they can get to expand. When they expanded the campus to Menifee, I thought that was an excellent, excellent choice. It only gets better. We all reap the benefits when we spread that education around. It just gets better. There was a time when Mount San Jacinto, unfortunately, was referred to as Mount Mickey Mouse. It goes back to that early days when people said, you really want a community college in the San Jacinto Valley? You really, you really want to put the college? Look where we are today and we don't get the resources and money that other colleges do. But that's okay, you know, fight on. Well, I think that Mount San Jacinto, for the funding that they get at the state level, has done the most efficient and most effective job in spreading that the farthest. Mount San Jacinto College has always done more with less. And I believe that's what has gotten us through so much of this, is that we're used to doing more with less. I don't think we're Mount Mickey Mouse. I don't think we're the underdog anymore. I think Mount San Jacinto has set its standard, has, has taken its place as a, a leading community college. And I really believe that with all my heart. We're here. Wow, has this college expanded and grown. 
uh, you know, we established the Temecula uh, complex, uh, put buildings up in the Beaumont Banning area, expanded programs, developed programs. I mean, there's so many, you know, honors and many, many different programs to serve the students. I think that the, the growth of the college has been phenomenal and the growth of the diversity of the departments has been phenomenal. I think that the, uh, the student demand has changed a lot and I think the college has really done an excellent job in trying hard to keep up with that demand. Going back again to Milo's idea of technology, we are one of the flagship community colleges in the state of California in terms of distance education. We are known for our distance education program. A lot of colleges have tried to play catch up with where we are. We received you know, awards from the Chancellor's Office and so we really deliver uh, distance education in a very significant and a very quality oriented way. So we're, we're known for that. Bottom line, I think all of us, whether we're administrators or classified or true faculty, we love to teach. By teaching is we're here for the students. There's no other reason for us not to be here. When we went through the last accreditation process, we were very excited. We were one of the only four institutions that was given a clean bill of health, and we were accredited for six years. That is an amazing achievement, and we are so proud. I can't tell you how proud we are of getting full affirmation and accreditation. We're such a small institution and every day we're getting calls from larger institutions that are asking us, how did you get through accreditation? We have been privileged at the Ramona Ball to have the Mount San Jacinto graduations every year. And it's been phenomenal to watch the increase in students that are graduating. And we always thought, boy, if you have your commencement at the Ramona Ball, you never have to go anywhere else. Well, now we're looking, well, maybe that isn't big enough for us. For me, graduation is our report card. Graduation is, is, is what we do. And when you see that many students stand up, it's um, very heartwarming. It's, it's what we do, and, and we should all be very um, proud that we have the opportunity to be part of it. We got our degrees in MSJC! Woo! 30 years from now, projecting into the future, Mount San Jacinto College will be at its peak. We just completed the facilities master plan that really takes us to the full evolution of the district. The San Jacinto campus will be completely transformed. We will have a performing arts center that will be the crowning jewel of the region. I can see a completely comprehensive campus at Menifee with a state-of-the-art athletic center and stadium. The San Gregonio Pass is destined to be another high growth area. We eventually see about 5,000 students being serviced out of that campus. I think the whole region is going to continue to grow and we have to be responsive to that. We have to develop programs that meet student needs, whether it's career technical education in television or computer skills, working in the allied health field, law enforcement, viticulture, or multimedia. We'll provide a beacon and an avenue for students to do well in entry level and advanced careers. Mount San Jacinto College is so fortunate. People support our foundation through so many avenues going to the gala, supporting scholarships. We've also got the special clubs, the Kiwanis, the Rotaries, the Chambers of Commerce, the actual cities themselves. The reality is that we've got great support from our community, and the partnerships allow us to do things collectively that individually no party can do on their own. As we look back at our history, look at where we have come from, and look at where we are now. The future looks incredibly bright for people of this community and this college. The college was so fortunate to have somebody like Milo Johnson to be the inaugural president of MSJC. He was such a visionary that he really laid the foundation and set the direction of this college for decades. As we look to the future, we see that neither obstacle nor mountain is too great to conquer with the right tools. Take up the mantle of an eagle with dignity and honor, and truly, truly, you shall soar.